You may not be aware, but the person sitting right next to you may have a special need. How and why are they at liberty might be the initial question that comes into your mind. Well, that's the question I'm going to answer for you today. Certain high-functioning special education students can only reach their full potential with teachers who know the history of special education, who have a, a willingness to evaluate certain behaviors in a student, and to obtain patience with the slower pace of the student. Um, and they have to be willing to integrate them into the real classroom no matter the severity of their disability. There are over 18,000 different known special needs, and this means that 750,000 people are diagnosed with a special need annually in our country alone. There are numerous known special needs from as mild as visual impairment and autism to extreme cases of epilepsy and mental retardation. I personally have two brothers, Michael and Tim, who are both diagnosed with cerebral palsy and mental retardation. And even though their conditions are too severe for them to be integrated into a real classroom, some special needs children have the ability and have potential to live like any other student with a little extra help. <coughs> so, what can teachers do to help integrate students into a real classroom? Well, to help you better understand the patience that teachers have to have, I have this illustration for you. In our minds, we might have little separate compartments or boxes for each subject when we sit in class and the teacher puts a, a problem or a sentence on the board that we have to correct. We go to maybe our math box and take out little pieces and put them together to eventually solve the problem. Well, that's not really how it is for a special needs student. Um, they have their, they might have their math box and their science box, but whenever a teacher puts a, a math problem on the board or a science problem on the board, they get a little bit more mixed up. So they have their math, and then a little bit of science and maybe some English. And so for teachers, they have to be patient to help them sort out which, which pieces go in their math compartment, in their science compartment, and what order they go in. Teachers must also evaluate the behaviors of the student to see if they are mentally ready to be integrated. I'm going to tell you about two types of behavior that are a must for a teacher to evaluate. These are desired and undesired behavior. In the Encyclopedia of Special Education, it states that the antecedent of a soother leads to the desired behavior, and by manipulating consequences to reinforcement, the desired behavior can be increased. That might be kind of hard to understand, so I'm going to give you another illustration to explain that. So you're sitting in class, and you're trying to listen to the teacher, and the person next to you is tapping their pencil loudly on the desk, and the teacher repeatedly asks them to stop. Well, they don't, and they keep tapping their pencil on the desk. So the teacher turns around and writes a sentence on the board. The tapping of the pencil uh, represents the undesired behavior. As the teacher is writing the, the sentence on the board, she's asking the student to please rewrite the sentence on his or her own paper. So writing the sentence out represents the desired behavior. Um, and it has been brought out of the student because once they start writing the sentence, they can't tap their pencil and write the sentence at the same time. So she is eliminating the undesired behavior by bringing out the desired behavior more frequently. So as you can see through knowing facts about special education, having patience and evaluating certain behaviors, these goals are not out of reach for modern day teachers. And high functioning special education students should never be discouraged to the point when they feel like they are not capable of integration. I'm going to conclude with a quote from Margaret A. Windsor's book, History of Special Education, and she writes the following statement. Disabilities are set in place before birth by God, or students would not be responsive to change except by miracle. 